Okay, guys, so there is something I wanted to um, talk to you guys about before we get playing some games here. So I wanted to take a quick look at this leak. This is a leak that I actually posted on Discord a few days ago. I didn't make a video on this then because it's not come from anybody reputable. And as you can see, the account here has been deleted. Uh, and he did say in the post that it's a burner account. But basically, this guy says he receives some information regarding the next Battlefield title. And for privacy, this is, you know, being posted on a burner account. And he says, my source was working with one of the support teams for BF6, but they left a few months ago. Take this info with a grain of salt, as it has now been a few months since they left, but I believe that the info is correct. And then later on, Tom Henderson uh, commented on Twitter about this leak, saying that some of the things in it were not completely 100% correct. So there's a bit of, uh, there's, there's not, not really the, the continuity there uh, to support this. So I'm just letting you know, Lau, take this with a grain of salt. This might be a load of rubbish, but there is a certain part of it that interests us quite a lot as uh, we like our vehicles and battlefields. And it's this bit here, it says, uh, vehicles in Battlefield are going to be similar to their Battlefield 5 counterparts. Attrition is coming back, at least for vehicles. The spawn system, however, will revert back to Battlefield 4 style. So, yeah, due to the balancing issues issues that the Battlefield 5 spawn system caused. So, in Battlefield 5, you had a number of different plane spawns, let's say, or armor spawns. And then you could select the different you know, kind of vehicle that you wanted. There wasn't an individual spawn for like a stealth jet and an attack jet, the same way there is in Battlefield. So it seems like, hopefully, fingers crossed, they're gonna go back to the way it used to be. Because the way it was in BF5, it often concluded with three fighter jets on one team and then three bombers on the other, other team and they would just get totally dominated by the fighter jets, or fighter planes, I should say. Um, but attrition coming back for Battlefield 6, does not really, uh, it doesn't really do it for me, you know, it doesn't fill me with joy, I gotta say. <laughs> because attrition, in, in my opinion, in Battlefield 5 just slowed down the gameplay beyond end, you know. I think for tanks, it encouraged them to camp in the middle of the map, wherever the resupply station happened to be. Uh, or, you know, I mean, it wasn't as bad for tanks, in my opinion, because they got, say, 20, 25 shells. So they could go push into a flank, do some serious damage, and then retreat back and resupply at, at one of these stations. But they still had to turn tail, and it felt a bit weird, in my opinion, to be pushing an objective and then just, oh, wait, we've got to turn around, guys, let's go back, we need to resupply. It is realistic, but it just doesn't really make for good gameplay, in my opinion. And uh, when it comes to the planes... It makes the planes even harder to deal with as infantry because what the meta is at the moment in Battlefield 5 is you take the two most powerful missiles in the game, sorry, the two most powerful rockets, I should say. I don't want to get clapped by Sierra for using the wrong terminology for the weapons here. And you basically gain as much altitude as you can. You come down pretty much at a 90 degree angle and you fire your two rockets, you maybe get four or five kills because they're ridiculously powerful and have crazy splash damage. And then you have to go away and resupply. Whereas in Battlefield 4, you know, if you're in the attack jet and you're constantly strafing a target, I feel like there's always going to be a player down there who's prepared for you to come back again. He's like, okay, I see this attack jet, he's coming back. You know, let me grab a straw, let me grab a stinger, whatever it may be, and I'm going to be prepared for him. And next time he takes a strafe, I'm going to take a shot. And sometimes they manage to kill you like that. But in BF5, nobody's going to wait for you to go all the way back to the deployment to resupply and then fly all the way back. They've they just forgotten about you, you know. They get killed by a rocket and then they're like, okay, that plane's, he's gone, he's resupplying. And then two minutes later, he comes back and does the same thing again from crazy distances. So I don't really think attrition is actually going to help out the infantry players in, in dying less. I mean, you know, you also see games in BF5 where pilots are getting ridiculous kill streaks compared to Battlefield 4. Like in Battlefield 4, going 60 and 0 is pretty damn good in an attack jet. In BF5, not so much. You know, it's more like 180 and 0. Then, then I would be impressed. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm interested to know what you guys think about this. Also, it says uh, down here that vehicle advancement will be class-based instead of type-based 
due to the large amount of vehicles in the game. So that's good. Instead of having to unlock things for specific vehicles like you had to in BF5, it's the Battlefield 4 system where you unlock it for the class, you know, the stealth jet, the attack jet, and it's unlocked for those vehicles on any side. However, it says here the vehicle tech tree will also return, but it will be large. Think Battlefield 5 War in the Pacific vehicle tech tree size. Not a big fan of that either. The vehicle tech tree in BF5 was super unbalanced. You just had some planes for certain factions that just had vastly superior upgrades to what the other factions had. I don't know why they put that in. I'm, I've not done a ton of playing of Battlefield 5, honestly, guys, but, um, you know, I think uh, having an unlock that allows you to have a higher flight ceiling if you're playing as one faction as compared to the other faction is kind of ridiculous. You know, that's that's an absolute game changer, having a higher flight ceiling. You guys will know that maps that you play on that have low flight ceiling, it's really hard to do well and it makes like a massive difference. So I think that's a bad move. But at the same time, I can kind of understand how vehicle tech trees could make things interesting if it's balanced over all of the different factions. So, you know, say stealth jets or let's say main battle tanks, if they get the exact same tech tree for all of the different tanks on all the different factions, that will be balanced. But, you know, I also am not a massive fan of like a cookie cutter builds of Battlefield 4. Like you take a tank, for example, you've got thermal, uh, thermal vision, you've got APS. There is no reason to take anything except for those those uh, upgrades, those loadout options, right? You're not going to go with anything else because that is just the best thing to take. You take it every time, every game, and there is no reason really to take anything else. But say you had like three upgrade paths, and APS is in one of them. A thermal vision is in another one, and you can't have both of those things, but they're still both incredibly lucrative and interesting. You know, that's actually like a decision you're going to have to make on a map by map basis. Let's say you're playing on propaganda. There's only one enemy tank on the other team. You know, you might go for thermal vision and risk not having APS so that you can kill more infantry. Whereas if you're playing on gold mode, you're probably going to need APS. You're not going to want to sacrifice that. So I don't know. I think it's uh, it, it could work the skill tree thing like they had in Battlefield 5, but they can't do it the same way that they did in BF5 where you know, vehicles and different factions became ridiculously unbalanced. Anyway, those, those are my thoughts on it. I wouldn't mind hearing yours as well.